be resolved immediately for the country. So Congress has to act on this now. One way or the other, they've got to get the guts to sit down and say, how are we going to solve the problem? And as soon as they do, as mayor, I'll implement it. But I don't have the authority to do anything at this point other than there's one thing I did tell everyone in the city. You've got to have an ID. So if, if you can't get a, an ID from the, the United States, you better get one from your country. And, and what has happened in New Bedford is people have been going to their councils and getting IDs. Because I said I can't have anybody living in New Bedford that we don't know who they are. Because if that's the case, then I have to assume that they're hiding from something. And if, the, and if that's the case, then we're going to have to deal with that, you know, with law enforcement. So that's, that's the only thing that I've been able to do, and, and that's what I'll continue to do. I'm waiting for Congress. Yes, sir. I, I think that's a great message, and I'm just wondering, as you go to Washington, is Congress hearing that message? Are there other mayors, are there other people sending that message to Congress? Because you speak to a, a small group like us, and it goes nowhere. You know, when I went last week, I, I met with our two senators and, uh, and Congressman Frank. They all were in favor of uh, working out some sort of uh, immigration reform bill this past spring. The president was in favor of it. In fact, one of the reasons people think that the raids took place both in the Midwest and in New Bedford was because the president was trying to send a message that this is the kind of thing that would happen all over the country if we don't straighten out this law. And he proposed some compromises. You've got, you've got uh, a couple of hundred members of Congress, between Congress and the Senate, who are still back and forth fighting on the fence. Some of who say you shouldn't, you know, everyone who's here should automatically be given citizenship, which I don't, I don't, I mean, as a, as a U.S. citizen, I don't agree with. I think there's got to be some sort of a system in place. And as a lawyer, I don't believe you can just, you know, give everybody blanket, you're here, and, and uh, you've got the same, same status as everyone else. But the fact of the matter is that I think Congress is going to act on it. But as long as someone thinks they, they're going to get a vote one way or the other, you know, someone's going to get a vote saying, I, you know, I believe that everyone's here should automatically be, become an American citizen and that's the way to resolve it. Or someone else says, I think everyone should have till, you know, Friday at noon to leave the city, to leave the city and the country. You're not going to get people to sit down and, and really talk about it. When they realize that the American people want it resolved and want it resolved in a way that makes sense, then I think Congress will do it. But until they get that message, they think it's, you know, they, each one thinks they're posturing for another vote. I also, when I went to Washington, said I thought New Bedford was used by both sides. I thought, I'm trying to figure out what we do with uh, 150 kids and how we take care of them. And, and I felt people were coming in using it uh, for or against immigration and making an awful lot of noise and statements and having rallies, and I didn't think it was appropriate or helpful in any way. Yes, sir. You got your part. Uh, what is the the, the industrial, the industrial park, uh, as of as of right now, over the last uh, year and a half, has gained 500 jobs, a net of 500 jobs. Lost 200 uh, and 25 at Polaroid, gained gained uh, about 725 throughout the rest of the park. So it continues to grow. Right now, the industrial park or the business park has a couple of great things going for it. The Polaroid site, which is just uh, which was transferred to a multi-layer technology and now is, is uh, closing down is 135 acres of, of developable uh, property and it's the biggest site that uh, exists in the state right now within an industrial park with, with a water sewer and electrical uh, uh, you know electrical feed so that means we've got an opportunity to go out and get another another new business uh, and bring it bring it into the city and quite frankly 135 acres should be supporting a heck of a lot more than 200 jobs so it may be a good opportunity there's also first Highland has a big piece in the front of the park uh, that is also a piece that's, that's readily available and I know there are a couple of companies looking at it now. So I think it will continue to grow. There's also, I believe, altogether there's 10 more lots that are available in the park right now, either on the New Bedford side or the Dartmouth side. So I'm, I'm optimistic that they're going to continue to move forward. As a follow-up to that, what, what, is this, what is the city? Do we have somebody out there trying to pull people into the city to do this? Is there a company out there trying to Oh yeah. To there's, I'll answer that too. Is the private sector has private companies marketing the city. For instance, multi-layer tech has, has a big company marketing the city. Tom Davis, who runs the Industrial Foundation, is out there every day bringing in uh, businesses, bringing in state officials, federal officials, and showing off uh, the, the, the appropriate uh, you know, sites in the park, and also working with the existing businesses to continue to expand their businesses. Then we have a fellow named Matt Morrissey in the city who has the New Bedford Economic Development Council who's out every single day uh, promoting the city for, for different, uh, you know, to different industries, to different uh, investors, 
uh, trying to bring people in, and I think I think that we're you know showing some real positive uh, results regarding that. I think I think we are going to get some uh, you know some major we'll get some more major commitments in the park, but I think around the city as well. Yes, sir. On that same issue, is is the city willing to give them tax breaks and incentives to come in as a business? Uh, if he doesn't, you know, in yeah. this area, electric is so high and gas is yeah. so high, they're probably apprehensive to come in here as opposed to going to Fall River. Or well, our our our, uh, our biggest competition is down south, not so much in other parts of the state. But we have uh, we we have tax uh, increment uh, agreements that we're able to work out. We have different uh, new market credits that we can get through lending institutions. We have historic tax credits if they're looking at historic pieces of property or, or mills, things like that, that might qualify. So we use all those, all those different tools. I'll do anything to bring in jobs, uh, but I, I think it's very, very important if we bring in, for instance, let's look at uh, what happened to Dartmouth. They gave away so many TIFs, they lost the tax base, and they ended up, they ended up in a situation then where they found that they didn't have the revenue to run the town. So I think that you have to be careful with it. It has to mean jobs. If it doesn't mean jobs, then you want to be, you know, you want to be very, very careful about giving away deals and then finding out that the jobs don't, don't materialize. Every job, you know what a job is worth. It's fantastic. It supports a family. It, it's a spin in our, in our community. It's very important. So jobs are the key, I think. Thank you very much for having me uh, come by. I appreciate it very much. mayor's office come anyone you have questions you want to uh, come by and say hello please come by and see me tell them I invited you uh, that even if I'm in a meeting knock on the door just say hi and I'll have someone show you around but thank you very much for this I appreciate it did you want me to go? the other thing I want to say just don't when I say two and a half years from now I I'm certainly not thinking, I don't want you to read too much in that. I'd be happy to be back here again as the mayor then, but I, I also want to let you know, though, that I really appreciate you thinking of me. This is beautiful. Oh, wow. That's terrific. This, this is our uh, a dead whale or a stove boat. This is the uh, statue right outside of the library. In fact, we just, just for everyone to know, I just had, last year my wife had said that the World War II monument where the, where the Liberty Bell is, just doesn't look very well. The grass is really never taken. The shadow from the library stunts the grass. So, uh, Scott, why didn't you figure out a way to get that going? And then about three months ago came and said, you didn't figure anything out yet. Why don't you brick it? <laughs> this, uh, this statue stands directly, if you're looking at the library, to the right of the World War II uh, Memorial. I'd like you to go by and, and see it, especially during this being Veterans Week. You'll see they completely bricked the plaza. They put in blue stone. Uh, planters, which now have evergreens in it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It'll be there a hundred years or longer. And uh, go by. This is the first week that it's been done. It just looks great. The statue's right next to it. You'll, you'll see this is a beautiful statue. So thank you very much for this, too.